<laughs> Trials riding may not be a household sport in your backyard, but for some adventurous cyclists, it's extreme biking at its best when riders tackle obstacles of all kinds using precision handling, jumping, and balancing skills. But what if you couldn't see those obstacles? What if your vision was so impaired you were essentially riding blind? Imagine that, and you'll begin to envision the life of blind trials rider Matt Gilman. At age 24, Matt was slowly losing his eyesight as a result of type 1 diabetes, a chronic disease which occurs due to high levels of sugar in the blood. I just thought it was time for me to get glasses since my whole family had glasses and I was the only one who hadn't. So I went to an eye doctor to, you know, get tested and see if it was time and they basically told me it was more serious than that. Ophthalmologist Dr. Raymond Sharda diagnosed Matt with diabetic retinopathy. Matt's diabetic retinopathy was one of the worst cases I've seen in my career. His retina almost didn't look normal. It was almost indistinguishable that you could actually make out a retina because of the extent of the new blood vessels that were growing across that. And when we looked at the blood flow in the retina itself, the capillaries had significant closure of the capillaries all throughout the retina, which is a very bad sign. And then Matt received the worst possible news a young rider could get. Dr. Raymond Sharda declared him legally blind. We performed 22 surgeries on Matt's eyes. We performed laser photocoagulation, vitreous surgery to try to remove the hemorrhage and the scar tissue, and also performed injections in his eyes here in the office to try to control the growth of the scar tissue. He looked like he had been run over by a truck. I mean, emotionally, you could just see that it tore him down, you know? And he knew that, it's almost like he knew the outcome, and he was just emotionally shut down. You know, what, what do you do? I guess it sunk in that I wasn't going to be able to drive a car or even ride a bike around. Um, just I couldn't see enough to walk on my own. There was no way I was ever going to ride a bike again. But that all changed one day when Matt decided to dust off his trials bike and return to the sport he loved. And one day I decided, you know what, I'm going to grab one of my bikes and see if I could jump around on the curb. So I went out there and I get on my bike and try and track stand, you know, the simplest move, and quickly realized that I couldn't even do that. So the next day I decided, you know what, I'm gonna figure it out. I grabbed my bike and just sat there and learned how to track stand. I eventually got it, then started learning how to jump around on the back wheel again and just trying to figure out spatial area where I was, which direction I was facing, and it kind of grew from that. When he first got on his bike, I mean, he was, he was hesitant about doing the things that we used to do because he couldn't see. But to see him grab the bike and figure out how he needed to change his riding to ride the way that he used to, it was, it was incredible to see. He's just feeling an edge or guiding the front wheel so he knows where he can put the bike and he won't fall off. And he was doing it. So what did it feel like to finally get back on the bike? It was a really good feeling. I was super excited just knowing I could do something that I used to love to do all by myself with no assistance was a really, really awesome feeling. So essentially, your bicycle has become your eyes. More or less, yeah. I mean, once I get on the bike, everything is done by feel through the tires. I can kind of use that moving the tire around to feel and kind of map out a picture in my head. Unfortunately, it doesn't help when you're jumping from one thing to another. But once my tires touch, then I know where I'm at. We're out here in this beautiful park with these huge boulders all around us. Are you afraid of falling? I'm actually not afraid of falling. I mean, obviously, no one wants to fall, but you're going to fall, especially doing what I'm doing. Um, and just knowing how to fall properly and knowing that you know, you, you're not going to fail 
even if you fall, you just gotta get back up and try it again and keep going until you make it. Believe it or not, Matt's also a bicycle mechanic at Joe's Bike Shop. Matt's been here for 12 years, and having him here is just, it's amazing watching him work. To see what he can do without his eyes, and to see that he can keep up and surpass you know, most mechanics that, that you would meet is absolutely amazing. What people, I think, underestimate is how much more difficult it is without being able to see. Matt's gotten so good at riding trials that it's easy to forget he's blind. Watch him on any given day, and you'll see him make quick work of rocks, boulders, and urban features of all kinds. He's so good, in fact, that Matt is using his gift to teach kids and adults alike about the pitfalls of type 1 diabetes, the disease that robs his eyesight. Basically, when I was about all your ages, around nine years old, I was diagnosed with diabetes. So do you guys think a blind guy can do some of this stuff? Yeah. Are you sure? Now age 32, with a promising career as a motivational speaker ahead of him and a roster of family and friends supporting him along the way, Matt Gilman sees nothing but a bright future. <laughs>